Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna learn how to use the system objects to reverse engineer your database. Hope you enjoy this video. Let's learn how to use system objects in SQL Server. Notice I'm using the database Scott Win 10 minus two slash SQL home. You can get that name by coming in and typing in at at server name, and that will give you the name of your server. Notice this is that value there. So this is very, very important. And now that we see that I have a list of catalogs I can use, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use AdventureWorks 2019. So we say use AdventureWorks. Now, after you do those, you need to always check down here at the bottom to make sure you're using the right environment. Notice here I'm using Scott Win 10 and AdventureWorks. Sometimes when we're using many databases, we can get lost with the wrong window and maybe perform a command that you wish you didn't. So make sure you always check those. The primary table is called sys.objects. Notice I'm going to get the first 15 rows. And notice it returns me a name and an object ID. These other columns are important but it all comes down to these two columns. So if you can remember sys.object, it lists every object that's in your database. This next command, notice I'm just doing a group by by type and type description, and it gives me all the different types that are in the system from check constraint all the way to view. Notice that we have 71 user tables. We have 71 primary keys. So this right here will kind of like give us a heads up of what's available. Remember, sys.object is our primary table. Here you can see where the type is user table. Go get the top five rows. Notice we went out and got employee department history down to product model. So very, very easy to go find user tables in this. As you can see in my object explorer under tables, notice I have all these tables that end in employee, employee department history, employee payment, pay history. Let's just go find everything that begins with employment. Look at our SQL statement. The only add line was this and, and object name like employee, whatever it ends with. So the name is very important. That's what me and you know. The database knows this object ID. Everything about this table employee is known by this object ID. The columns, the constraints, everything about this table is known by this one object ID. The next important table is called sys.schemas. Notice here, when we use sys.objects, we have the schema ID. If I just execute both of these together, let's see what happens. Notice schema ID five equals human resources. Look at human resources dot department employee, employee department history and so forth. Now that you're starting to see that name, the object and the schema ID, you're starting to understand this. And remember type description and type tells us the different type of SQL statements. Earlier, I showed you a group by. This right here must be in your toolkit to do this command right here to give you a list of what is available. This next SQL statement is kind of nice. I'm going to join the object and the schemas together. Notice I'm going to join it on schema ID. And then where the object type is user table and the schema is like human resources, Show me all of those tables. Let's execute that. Notice from department down to shift, and you can see that department to shift inside of the object explorer. So this is a very easy SQL statement to perform and it gives you so much information. Earlier, I told you that the object ID is very important. Here you can see that we're gonna start using 17, you can see it down here, 17 ends in 1100. We're going to use this object ID and we're going to go find the children and other resources. Using the object ID that we found in the select statement starting on line 29 to 38, we're going to take that 17 number and notice here, I'm going to go to the sys columns where the object ID is that value. Let's execute this and see what happens. Notice we get the name of the columns. 
In the SQL statement, you see that I said schema name like hum. So here we have it over here, human resources dot department. Notice our columns, department ID, name, group name, and modified date, just like we see here. So you can see that we are reverse engineering this database using the system objects. Now, when we look at the output of this SQL statement here, it kind of looks easy. We understand object ID, column name, the ordinal position. Now these next four columns, hmm, a little tricky. Let me explain that to you. Now, when I look at the human resources department, notice I have the column names. You see that department down to modify date. And the ordinal position is the way they line up. Now look here, small integer name is varchar, name and varchar and date time. Now what is this name? Well, name is a user defined data type. And that's, that's kind of what these columns are showing me here. So the system data type is called nvarchar. The user very creatively wants to call that name and he might use this throughout the system. Doesn't want to call it nvarchar, wants to call it name. They are the same data types, but the spelling is different. And maybe for documentation, this makes a whole lot more sense than seeing nvarchar. Notice when I did those joins, I joined the same sys types table. And sometimes I use the user defined data type. And sometimes I use the system type ID. So that's how I was able to get both the user defined data type and the system data type. Notice max length on an N varchar. This is actually twice the field size. If you watched my video about what is N varchar, how much disk does it take? I explain why this is twice as large. Then notice we have these bit fields. A bit is either one or zero. One is true, zero is false for all of those. And then we have a precision and scale for our, all of our data types, small n, date time. Wanted to make the output just a little bit more friendly, so I turn those bits into a yes or no. So at a quick glance, we can see another change I did is is nullable. I always find that I have to explain what that is. So I renamed that to is required, and then I flipped the reasons. So if it is one, which is true, nullable, then I'm going to say no, that is on the required. It is not null, it is not required. Had to flip them. But as you see here, all of these fields are required. Then we did that table joining with the types. We have the two types now that you understand that. And then when I execute it, this is what we get as our output. Now we are going to use this output from this SQL statement to write a code generator. We're going to generate a bunch of little utilities. That's what my website is about. It's about making nuggets. So this will be the output, output from a database and then input to a program. And that program will generate a web page, a SQL statement, you know, an insert, update, delete statement, all of those things that we can generate by reverse engineering a database. And the last thing about columns I would like to show you is notice I can right click and say design. Then I can come down to the properties and notice description. Description has something that we can use. Can you imagine our web page has a balloon tip and then we put description in there? That would be pretty sweet. Let me show you how we get that out of the database. We're going to go up against sys.extendedProperties. And the major is this number. What's 17? 17 is the object ID. And then the minor, 1, 2, 3, 4. Doesn't that look like the ordinal position? And the class is 1 will tell us which row to use. Notice here we got those descriptions. We can now put that into our joins, our big table, our reverse engineering, so we can do code generating. And now we have this available. So our object is starting to get pretty rich. 
Our next syst object we're going to look at is sys.checkconstraints. Now for sure, whenever we're going to do inserts or updates, these right here come into play and make sure that our values are appropriate. Let's go ahead and execute this. And notice that in the employee table, we have six check constraints. Let's go see how they look like. In the object explorer, click on that and say design. And then once that comes up, we have a list of our columns and then we can come over to one of the fields that had a check constraint and then say, see how it says check constraints. And then notice for the birth date, here is the constraint. Notice it's just a little formula, which is pretty sweet. If you have never used a check constraint, all you have to say is select definition from sys.checkconstraints from the database. You know, AdventureWorks is a great source of learning. So we can go get 89 different check constraints that we can learn from. So study these, figure out what you want, and then add them to your local database. And there you have it, team. How was that an intro for the sys.objects column extended properties and such? Pretty interesting, yes? Now, this is going to take me a couple of videos to get through all the sys.objects. And we're going to be able to write a code generator when we're all done with this, which will be 100% amazing. It will teach you how to start scaling your abilities. I'm going to guarantee that. I've been writing code generators for more than 30 years, and I know how valuable they are. And that is a skill I'm going to teach you. And there you have it. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you back in the next video. Have a great week, okay?